Hello there again, it's Pastor Greg and you're watching Transforming the World. Uh, again, just to remind you in case you this is your first time tuning in, uh, we're doing a year-long study of 52 different characteristics that should be found in the life of a Christian. We're looking at the uh, characteristic of availability today and uh, we're using something called the Disciples Journal. Uh, and in the Disciples Journal, there's a section there that is a self-evaluation uh, list of questions to help us do a self-evaluation. Number seven, question number seven asks this. Uh, am I willing to say yes to jobs that are beyond me, knowing that God will give me grace? Hmm. Interesting question. <laughs> Why is it important for a Christian to do something way outside of their comfort zone? Why is that so important? Well, we'll take a look at that today. I'll be right back. Luke chapter 1. In Luke chapter 1, we are introduced to a young girl named Mary. Uh, this is Mary, the same Mary who was chosen to be the mother of Jesus. She was to carry uh, the seed of God within her and give birth to a boy, name him Jesus. This Jesus would be the Messiah. Uh, an angel, an angel by the name of Gabriel announces to Mary that uh, she would conceive a child out of wedlock. And in the eyes of the community, um, it would appear that she had been a little bit promiscuous, if you will sleeping with somebody outside of marriage because she, she wasn't married at the time. Betrothed, yes. Married, no. The marriage had not been consummated. So Mary was asked to basically uh, put her whole life on hold in order to bring the Messiah into the world. Probably suffer some shame and ridicule along the way. That's what that's what God was asking Mary to do. And, you know, you read verse 38 in this response in Luke chapter 1. <laughs> Mary comes along and says, hey, I am the Lord's servant. That, to me, is, to me, that, that's asking an awful lot. To me, it seems that God was asking an awful lot of this young girl. I mean, uh, I understand why God waited before the marriage had been consummated because, you know, if, if Mary had been married, well, everyone would have naturally thought that this was Joseph's biological son. I get it. I get it. I, I understand the necessity to do this before the marriage. But, wow, I mean, talk about putting your life on hold. And this is what God asked Mary to do. She accepted the responsibility, even though she saw herself as a lowly servant girl. Um, verse 48. Actually, the same could be said about the apostles of Jesus. None of them were exceptional. None of them were influential leaders in their communities. They weren't. Most of them were ordinary. A few of them were literally hated like Matthew, for example. None of them were very important men, and yet Jesus called them to continue the work that he began. Well, the Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 that very few individuals in that church were powerful or wealthy, 1 Corinthians 1, 26, and yet God called them, right? They were asked to make themselves available so the Lord could do mighty things through them. And in all honesty, the Corinthian church at its beginning was really making an impact in that city. And we could talk about that another day, but the truth of the matter is this. Those Corinthian Christians were uh, turning that city right side up. There were people coming to that little church, that little assembly, that um, you never would have expected to see in church at all. Now, if you and I are only willing to do 
what makes us comfortable or perhaps volunteer in in church in a uh, volunteer in a position in the church that is within our training or within our skill set if you will there is a good chance as we do a job because it's our skills it's our training this is where we've been educated if we do something we do it well there's a really good chance that people are going to give us the credit for what we have done however when our willingness to be available extends beyond our skills and talents at that point we have truly become a servant to the lord a lot of the times what you and i are doing in church is merely an extension of perhaps a spiritual gift a natural talent or a skill that we have acquired but there will be those times in our life as a christian when god has said are you available to do something that you have never done before are you available to do something that is way outside of your comfort zone and when we say yes that's when we truly become a servant that's when we truly treat jesus christ as lord of our life and it's in those moments when we are forced to defend on the father or the holy spirit for guidance and wisdom that he is truly honored that's what it means to call Jesus Lord. That's what it means to pray, thy will be done. It means that where the Lord sends us, we will go, even if it makes us quite uncomfortable. It is no simple task. I, I, I think we need to state this. We really do. It is not a simple task for the Christian to, to lift their hands and say, you know, you are my Lord. To call Jesus Christ Lord, what it means is that, uh, number one, you're available. Lord, I am available to do thy will. Uh, I'm, I'm willing to do something that makes me uncomfortable. That's what it means to call Jesus Lord. I'm willing to go someplace I've never been before to do something that I have never done before. Why? Because you are Lord and I trust that you will send me. And that you would be glorified through what I do. So it's not a simple task for us on a Sunday or, or wherever we might be as we are praying the Lord's Prayer and say, Thy will be done. That's not a simple little phrase. That is a phrase that says, I'm available. I am available, Lord, to do your will. I'm willing to let you work through me and ask me to do something that is going to interrupt my life. Or something that's going to make me incredibly uncomfortable because I've never done it before. That's what it means to call Jesus Lord. That's what availability means. We'll take a, we'll take a look at some examples of individuals in scriptures, uh, in our scripture, who uh, were not available and were unwilling to call Jesus or God Lord. Um, and the excuses they came up with why they could not serve. We'll take a look at those tomorrow in Transforming the World. Thanks for spending time with me today. My name is Pastor Greg.